Hello and welcome to InvestorToday.ca. I'm your host, Dave Glover. And today's show, we'll be discussing the uh, REE World's Technology Summit. That's the summit that took place February 1st and 2nd, 2012 at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Toronto, Canada. This was a first-time event for the Technology Metal Summit, and the event was hosted in conjunction with REE World and ProEdge Consultants, as well as Market Edge Media. They were the primary uh, event hosts, with special thanks going out to Afura, Avalon, Great Western, Rare Metal Blog, Paley Mountain, and Stan's Resource, or Stan's Energy Corp, rather. Let me begin by saying I am brand new to the world of rare earth elements. Uh, the name, of course, is somewhat misleading, as I discovered during the two-day event. They are called rare earth elements, but they are, in fact, anything but rare. And I'll tell you, from a, from a layperson's standpoint, I was completely blown away by the presentations, uh, all presentations, actually, starting first and foremost by a presentation, uh, with a presentation, rather, by Constantine Karianopoulos, who is the CEO and President and Director of Neo Material Technologies, Inc. Uh, the first discussion was that of shortages, surpluses, and foggy roller coaster rides, dispatches from the rare earth front lines. And I must say that Constantine uh, Karianopoulos broke it down for not just me, but for all of those in attendance in that early morning meeting. It started at 8.15 in the morning. And this was a rare earth elements 101 for, uh, as I said, for a layperson, for, for anyone who's just getting into the uh, business of rare earth elements. I attended the summit on behalf of one of my clients, Hinterland Metals, Inc., which is HMI on the TSX. And I must say, uh, I was a a completely blown away, not just by the presentation, but by the overall feel of excitement at this summit. Most of us realize that new technologies require smarter materials. They also require smaller components, and they also require rare earth elements. Everything from your cell phone to your laptop to your plasma television to your big screen television, military applications, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, if you are lucky enough to have attended the event as I have, you would have picked up brochures from a number of companies who were in attendance, a number of exhibitors who were there. And I will get to the list of those exhibitors uh, towards the end of this broadcast. I want to let folks know that we're at the very early stages of uh, rare earth element uh, exploration and discovery. One of the uh, one of the analogies put forth was that of uh, airplane technology or aerodynamic technology. If we go back to the beginning of rare earth elements and sort of the late 40s, early 50s, and we think of that as the Wright brothers, as we travel along the history of rare earth exploration development. And processing, we now find ourselves uh, continuing with the airline analogy of uh, Lindbergh's first solo flight across the Atlantic. And what I mean by that is that this is a very new to a lot of people, but there are a few people who have been in on this uh, basically since the beginning. Now, what are rare earth elements? These uh, comprise primarily of 10 elements found on the periodic table. Several of them are new, actually. So we're talking about uh, lanthanum, cerium, uh, praesodium, or dimium, rather, neodymium, samarium, yttrium, disoprosium, disoprosium rather, terbium, gandolinium, and europium. And just to give you an idea of the applications, we've got metal, uh, medicinal applications, component applications, color screen LCDs and, and uh, personal display monitors as well as energy efficient lighting, rechargeable batteries, that would be lithium of course, new generation vehicles, electric vehicles, uh, vehicles using uh, rare earth elements such as uh, neodymium and, and, and this is uh, required to make uh, the product stronger and also to uh, make the metals lighter. And the list goes on, UV filters, reducing fuel consumption in vehicles through, through uh, Again, neodymium, which is used in catalytic converters. So uh, for, for those of us out here in, the, in our consumer society, it seems everything 
contains rare earth elements. And that's really what the the main message was, I think, of this, uh, this particular summit. Now, we have rare earth element exploration happening in Canada. Canada is considered one of the new... Uh, new leading edge countries when it comes to the discovery of uh, rare earth elements. Uh, big big developments in, in Quebec as well as along the Quebec-Ontario borders. But discoveries in Labrador, in northern Ontario, northern Canada. Uh, we've got companies that are operating in Greenland. So um, the perception out there for rare earth elements is that it is predominantly something that is controlled by China. And and that is true. They do They do carry a huge huge portion, uh, the majority of uh, rare earths that are getting to market. Now that having been said, we need to uh, discuss where we go from from exploration to to mining and then there's the, the processing uh, portion of the business and then the separation process of the business, which which can be very costly. And, and one of the things we discovered over this two-day summit is there is a serious uh, need for sorting facilities and this is so we can take the rare earth elements out of an ore uh, say uh, if we have an, an an iron ore element for instance we have a handful of uh, of materials and we know that there are three or four uh, rare earth elements that are contained within that ore well we need to be able to separate that and we need to be able to specifically separate those rare earth elements so that we can get those to market and that's what we're talking about so we're talking about uh, a huge growth potential, uh, not just in the markets, but also uh, for investors and also for these companies. Now, a number of these companies are burgeoning companies. Uh, the, the one I represent or was there as a representative of Hinterland Metals, for instance, has been in uh, the rare earth elements business, uh, exploration business for some time. And they are making some, some incredible progress. But until we can uh, come up with a joint uh, private and public partnership, we're not going to see the major investments, at least this is what I was able to garner from this particular event, that we're going to need in order to, to maintain the, uh, the amounts necessary to uh, maintain continued growth in rare earth elements. And this, is, this, is specifically has, uh, this specifically has to do, rather, with getting the product to market. And uh, so far, the Chinese are way ahead of us. But there are a number of companies a number of companies located in in the United States, in Canada, as well as in Australia, that are uh, pulling ahead and getting themselves up. Uh, the Dubo Zirconia project, for instance, with Alcan Resources Limited, which is located in Australia. We're talking about a company that has uh, a very strong infrastructure, uh, accessible to roads, accessible to cent uh, central rail hubs. There's water available for in, in terms of their infrastructure availability. There's a major agricultural hub within them. Uh, natural gas is available. So this is a project that is that is going to be uh, up and running, probably full steam in, in a very short while. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the company principals who was a, a speaker at this particular event uh, talked about the fact that uh, by by 2013, that's that's their hope. 2013, 2014, at the very latest, to uh, to get themselves to the point where they're now uh, at market. I guess the the real message that I got from the Rare Earth Technology Summit in 2011 was that the need is getting stronger, that the market is very strong, and that there are a, a number of things necessary to make a project a good project. Obviously, uh, capitalization is is a huge benefit to uh, to whether or not your company is successful but a, a number of other things I mean you've got to make sure that you have all your permits in place that uh, permit procedures are followed accordingly uh, to whatever jurisdiction you happen to be in but uh, I mean what makes a good project uh, obviously the geology and, and and mineralogy perspective need to be to look at you need to have tonnage when you're when you're talking about that we're talking about mineralogy as well as metallurgy uh, you need to have potential for near, uh, near-term, low-cost production or processing, as we said. So cheap and quick. That's that's one of the mantras that came out of this. What is the shape of your ore body? The host minerals as well. How difficult will it be to extract your rare earth elements and at at a low cost? Keeping that in mind, obviously, cost is a huge 
aspect to any project. You need to make sure you have a good team and, and that the infrastructure is there. And we're, again, we, we're referring to capital infrastructure, roads, transportation. You need to make sure that, uh, that your material infrastructure is there and that all your, your local amenities are there. And you also want to look at, at what are the more desirable rare earths. Like uh, Xenotime, for instance, is a very popular uh, rare earth. It's, it's one of the most desirable rare earths out there. The long and short of it is a lot of these projects have longevity. Um, some of these projects can, can be up and running in uh, a very short order. We're talking uh, the earliest 2013, uh, some projections 2015. But uh, several of these projects will be up and running by 2020 at the very latest. And these, these are projects that can that can be sold, that can be, that can be uh, invested in by investors, but also uh, when we talk about the private-public aspect of it. We need to educate people, I think, is probably the biggest point. And that was the one thing that I got out of this, uh, this two-day summit was the, the level of education that's required. I mean, we're talking about consumer products and, and the demand for consumer products to be small, to be portable, and to provide you know the visual aspect that you're going to require from a, a, an LCD screen for instance or the formatting capability of your cell phone these are all aspects that are that are helped with rare earth elements and i want to thank um Tracy Weslowski and and Sid for being there to answer the questions that i had as as the days went on and also to the various experts that were there topics of discussion again Attracting Tomorrow's Rare Earth Metal Scientists. There was a great discussion put on, uh, moderated by Ian London, uh, who is the uh, Development and Energy Advisor at Avalon Rare Metals, Inc. And he brought a panelist of students with him, MBA students, Bachelor of Science students, Carolyn Burns uh, from the Schulich School of Business, Andrew Ng from the University of Toronto, uh, Nicholas Lico, or Lyco, I believe, sorry, a nanotech engineer, uh, University of Waterloo. These are these are the future of rare earth developments, rare earth sciences, and rare earth technologies uh, from a Canadian perspective. But these were just a handful of students who who get it, who understand the direction of of progress, to understand uh, just how necessary rare earth elements are. Uh, and again, there there are military applications. There are also uh, non-military applications. There are consumer applications, and then there are there are medical applications. Rare earth elements are to the 21st century, uh, I believe, what the discovery of the silicon chip was to to the PC generation and to the to the home computer generation. This is the uh, beginning. Uh, we are finally realizing, and, and again, it's been ongoing since, as I said, the the uh, early 50s, late 40s, when we first started to understand these elements when these elements were first being discovered and we are realizing what their full potential is and it is the goal of individuals uh, at the rare earth technology summit and, and also individuals at pro edge communication at our e, e world and at market edge where we have uh, various blogs various newsletters that are available for you to peruse uh, at any time frankly regarding rare earth elements but I wanted to uh, give my listeners an opportunity to, to hear uh, from me uh, what my impressions were and also to, to give listeners an opportunity to, to think about rare earth elements, uh, light rare earth elements, heavy rare earth elements, and just what those elements represent uh, to the near future and to the, to the distant future. I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm, I'm Dave Glover. This has been InvestorToday.ca, and I've been discussing the world. Technology Metal Summit, the REE World Technology Summit. Thank you.